Good evening, everyone. My name is Luke Pizzatola. Thank you for joining us. Our special guest tonight is an exceptional figure in American history. And although he has been cited for bravery and courage, his place in history is one he would most certainly never wish on another soul. For on November 22nd, 1963, now coming close to 50 years ago, he was part of the Secret Service detail assigned to protect President and Mrs. John F. Kennedy. The assassination of President Kennedy on that day in Dallas put our guest in the iconic film frames, photographic images, and collective memories that record and recall one of the most dramatic moments in our country's history. A history known viscerally to anyone living at that time and sure to be known by generations to come. What is less known about our guest is that on that tragic day and for th three years before and almost a year afterwards, he was assigned to Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, not the president. And it is that special assignment to guard an intensely private first lady, then former first lady, that is the subject of his new book, Mrs. Kennedy and Me. Tonight we are pleased that the co-author of Mrs. Kennedy and Me, Lisa McCubin, joins our special guest in conversation. Lisa co-authored the book, The Kennedy Detail, and is an award-winning journalist and TV news anchor and reporter. Please join me in welcoming Lisa McCubin and Clint Hill. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Great to see you all here. Um, what we'd like to do tonight is just sort of have an informal conversation with Clint Hill. And I'll ask him some questions, and he'll share some stories with you. And then we're going to open it up to questions and answers. And um, he's very willing to answer whatever questions you have. Um, trust me, he's heard them all. So <laughs> don't be shy. So um, uh, Mr. Hill. <laughs> I call him Clint, so I can call you Clint, right? Yes, you may. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, first off, why? You know, for so many years, you were you were silent about this subject, and you didn't do any interviews. You you just didn't talk about those years with the Kennedys. Why, at this stage of your life, did you decide to write a book? Well, I had vowed that I would never write a book, that I would never contribute to a book, never had any any part in it. And then a friend of mine, who was a former agent, decided to write a book, and he enlisted m my assistance by asking me to contribute. And he hired you as his writer. And he introduced you to me, and over a period of time, I began to trust you and have confidence in you, and you elicited certain information from me that I didn't think I'd ever release. And uh, I found that it was rather cathartic to do so. Then. Uh, I have some friends who were former reporters in the White House, and they retired, but they were there in the 1960s and covered Mrs. Kennedy. And they said that although they covered her, they were never permitted to interview her, and they really never knew her. And they said, well, why don't you, who really did know her and spent all your time with her, document that period of time and put it down in history? And I realized that, well, the information I did have was of historical significance, and maybe it was a good idea. And then Simon and Schuster came to us, to you and myself, and suggested we write a book. And so that's how this book developed. And I have to tell you, it was really a rewarding experience for me. Um, I don't think we ever had one fight. We, uh, we worked very well together, and um, I felt very privileged to have this rare window into those years and to be able to just, you know, kind of relive it with Clint. And so it was really wonderful for me as well. So we started off the book. We decided to start <laughs> from the beginning <laughs> when um, Clint was first told that he was going to be assigned to Mrs. Kennedy. Um, President John F. Kennedy had just been elected, and it was November 1960. Um, Clint was 28 years old. How did you feel when you were told that you were going to be assigned to Jacqueline Kennedy? I was really disappointed, almost devastated, because I'd been with President Eisenhower, 
We'd been all over the world. And I had a pretty good idea of what was going to happen because I'd seen the relationship that First Ladies had and the activities that they participated in in the past. And I knew it was either going to be fashion shows or tea parties or ballet school. And I didn't want any part of that. I wanted to be where the action was. So I was extremely disappointed. And then I met Mrs. Kennedy on the Friday after that election in November of 1960. She at her residence in Georgetown in uh, near Washington, D.C. And uh, she was an elegant, classy lady, extremely pregnant. And uh, she was not too pleased that she was going to have somebody around her 24 hours a day. And I was not too pleased that I was going to be part of that group. So at first, it was not a mutual admiration society, believe me. But over time, uh, we became good friends. Well, and I think people might be interested to know that um, at that time, there were only two agents assigned to the First Lady. So there was Clint and another agent, and they were in charge of protecting her around the clock. So you weren't exactly working a 40-hour work week, is that correct? Oh, that is correct. We didn't work ever, no. And we didn't get paid for overtime at the beginning either. But uh, it was a great experience. And uh, it was a great responsibility because I was assigned to take care and protect the wife of the President of the United States and look after his children. And those were the things he loved the most. And so I had that hanging over my head all the time. So what kinds of things made it in the end be such a great assignment? Well, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Mrs. Kennedy was extremely athletic. She loved to ride horses, and she was an accomplished equestrian. She loved to play tennis. She loved to water ski. She played golf, and she walked and walked and walked. And I had to be a part of that all the time. Now, I came from North Dakota, and we didn't have a great deal of water, so I wasn't too avid at water skier. I had no ability playing tennis whatsoever, so I started out as a complete novice at everything she did. And it was rather evident. Well, and you also had some um, some pretty nice places to, to go to, the places where she spent her time. Tell us about where you spent most of your time when you were with her um, away from the White House. And we were away from the White House a great deal. It was uh, a rather routine schedule that they had as a family, the Kennedys, in the summer from uh, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, including, and then Thanksgiving, we would always be in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. For Christmas, New Year's, Easter, it was Palm Beach, Florida. And in between, we they had leased a place in Middleburg, Virginia, and so we spent weekends in the country. And then in the summer, Mrs. Kennedy always liked to go on a cruise. And so we would cruise the Mediterranean. In six, 1961, we were aboard the North Wind off the coast of Greece. In 62, we spent the summer, part of the summer in Italy, in Mirabello and Amalfi, aboard the yacht Agneta. And in 63, we were spent the, air, the time in the Greek islands up into Turkey on board the massive yacht Christina. And then in 64, we also spent the time in the Mediterranean on board a yacht called the Radiant. So it was four years, four summers, all cruising in the Mediterranean. Not bad for a kid from North Dakota. <laughs> and when you travel, um, all over the world. She was extremely popular. And um, tell us about that. Tell us about the crowds that would come and the difficulties of, of protecting her in those kinds of environments when it's just you and one other agent most of the time. It was rather real unusual for uh, us to find that this lady, a first lady, whenever we traveled abroad, generated a crowd equivalent to 
or larger than the president